All right, I'd like to report that in closed session, uh, the board approved student matter number one, student number 18051. For our agenda hearing period, there were no public communications submitted, so uh, we will move on to the rest of our agenda. So we'll start with our first presentation from our student representative. Benny, it's all yours. Hello, everyone. Um, to begin, for our November Teacher of the Month, we had Mr. Whalen, and for our students, freshman Jack, sophomore Sky, junior Duke, and senior Kira. We hosted our first ever Lit Kahoot Friday virtual uh, Zoom event in which students would gather together on Zoom and play various Kahoot games together. For our first game, we had 30 participants, and our, that was last Friday. And our second one will be, or two Fridays ago, and our second one will be this Friday. Um, Band hosted a virtual pet Halloween costume in which people could submit costumes of their dogs. Um, we also, ASB hosted a pumpkin carving contest. The Student Senate, which is a meeting of all the club's presidents, will have their second meeting next Tuesday. That is the 17th. Um, yearbook is now accepting submissions um, from students from different clubs and sports and activities and things like that for to be put inside of the yearbook. And finally, our senior memories were due November 1st. That is all. Thank you, Benny. Uh, next, we have an update from the El Segundo Education Foundation. And uh, Frank Glenn is here with us. Thank you very much. Um, happy to be here. Um, just get down a little bit. Uh, so just a couple of items to report on. Um, we had a very successful uh, Skechers peer-to-peer -peer walk. It was virtual this year, as you know. And uh, we had a, um, a huge increase in participation from the community which will uh, greatly benefit us when um, Skechers uh, in probably in February will be letting us know exactly how much money we raised. Um, we were up over 100 participants from previous years and we, um, uh, we have a way of, of tracking um, who was participating from the various school districts and El Segundo was one of the few um, districts that had a higher participation than previous years. So great job by the community on that. Um, secondly, um, we have Ladies' Night Out coming up next week. It's on the 19th. Uh, tickets are on sale. Um, and you can opt to um, get a premium ticket, which includes um, a beverage of your choice and some other goodies. And we hope that everyone will uh, will join us. It's going to be a fabulous event. There's been a lot of work done in the background uh, to make this uh, something very spectacular. So it's uh, don't miss it. It's going to be great. And that's my report. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a virtual fashion show. That sh that should be a unique experience for for the models as well as for us viewing so thank you and then uh, our third presentation is from the lc Gendo middle school dr moore Yes, it's with a great deal of pleasure. I welcome our team from El Segundo Middle School, the Proud Bulldogs. We have Principal Adam Wright, Assistant Principal Carrie Olashian, our IB Coordinator, Crystal Winner, and our teacher on assignment uh, in the area of technology, working with altitude and coaching teachers, Sean Brandlin. Welcome all. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Nishimi, members of the school board, Dr. Moore and cabinet. My name is Adam Wright, and I'm the proud principal of El Segundo Middle School, home of the Bulldogs. Uh, Danny, next. Uh, since our last State of the Union, or State of the, State of the School address, uh, we've had a few changes here at ESMS. Uh, we have four new teachers on campus, uh, one new counselor, one new AP, and uh, me. Uh, this is my first uh, State of the School address, or State of the School address for El Segundo Middle School, and I couldn't be happier. The school itself looks different too. Our office is under construction, so right now our office is in the library, and uh, you know we've 
been on a thing called distance learning the last eight months. So a lot of changes here happening at Elsa Glenda Middle School. But at Elsa Glenda Middle School, we've embraced the change. Okay, our theme for this year has been patience and grace. And this theme is not just for our staff, but also for our students and parents. The Elsa Glenda Middle School community is truly embracing change with patience and grace. So some successes and highlights. Uh, next slide. And then uh, some successes and highlights for our last year. Next. In the weeks before we went out on distance learning, students created projects that linked the El Segundo Unified School District's graduate profile to the IB Learner Profile. And IB is the program we have here on campus. Uh, students created amazing artwork, music videos, and presentations that showed how the graduate profile and IB Learner Profile were linked together. Our AMP cohort was a model program for other schools, and we had multiple visits from other schools to see the amazing things our AMP teachers were doing. Altitude provided a solution for our AMP cohort to provide voice and choice for our students' lessons. They gave students multiple avenues to show proficiency in a topic. We also increased our parent outreach. Uh, when I came in, we changed our weekly newsletter to the weekly woof. We had multiple coffee with the principals, and in the spring, we held multiple town, home, town halls in order to keep parents and the community updated on what was going on at the middle school. Next. A little bit of data about El Segundo Middle School. Next. What you see pictured is a snapshot of our demographics. We've about 796 students at our school this year, and we have diversity at our school. We make decisions at El Segundo Middle School that benefit all students, whether they're on campus or virtually. The data also shows we have a need to address diversity and provide teachers with training in cultural proficiency, which we are doing this year. We'll be more on that later. Next. We have an amazing attendance rate right now, thanks in large part to our teachers and our attendance clerk, Susie Flores. Teachers are taking attendance early in the period, and if Susie notices that a student is marked absent, She's calling home to check on the student. Parents have been extremely grateful to Susie and appreciate her calls so that they know their students are online and engaged. We've also been tracking our students that are online but not engaged in lessons. We've created a Google form for teachers to fill out. When the teachers submit the form, it alerts myself, Ms. Olashian, and the counselors. We then use these alerts to reach out to families. Every single student on our campus matters, and we have a plan for them. Next. Altitude learning at El Segundo Middle School has been a resounding success. This year, we've already had over 7,600 stream posts. So that is emails that are sent from Altitude uh, to parents that are detailed with the students learning and um, giving feedback on those cards. We have about 89% of our parents and teachers and students viewing the streams. We also have assigned 109,500 cards to date, and that's as of uh, November 5th. Uh, we've given about 23,000 formative assessments, and of all the assessments given on the platform, about 68% of those assessments were given that were formative. And when we give formative assessments, there is a lot of feedback that the teachers give to students based on their performance. So as you can see, Parents, students, and teachers are actively involved in altitude. We'll discuss, discuss our campus-wide transition to altitude in the coming slides. So some survey data. Uh, in the spring, there was a survey about how we were doing on distance learning, and then another one now here in the fall. And you can see the data in front of you. Right now, in this first question, we see that more parents feel that students are engaged in their classes about the right amount of time compared to the spring, where they felt that they were not engaged nearly enough. In the second question, more parents, parents feel their students are being challenged this fall than they were in the spring. The next slide. Students are engaging daily with their classes and we, we heard from parents and we saw in the spring that this wasn't happening. So we've worked with our staff and we've worked with teachers to modify our distance learning structure with students engaging daily with their track with their teachers and so their teachers are able to track their progress. The second question, the fall student, this fall students are spending an increased time in synchronous learning than they did in the spring. And talking to parents and students, 
we find that students can be easily distracted in this learning environment, which may account for some of them taking more time to complete their assignments. Some more changes coming into the fall. So as we've been through the spring in, in distance learning, we came to the fall and realized that some changes had to happen around campus. So we're gonna talk a little bit about our IB implementation, uh, the use of altitude in the AMP cohort, our distance learning schedules, and uh, social emotional wellness and engagement. Um, so to start with our schedule, this was probably the, the biggest fundamental, change, fundamental change we made uh, at the end of the spring and into the summer. With distance learning, we heard from our parents and students that in the spring and while in distance learning, students felt overwhelmed. We decided to change our schedule to benefit our students while at home. We moved from a traditional eight period block schedule to a four by four. Now, how is a four by four different? In our traditional block, students went to all eight classes on Monday and then went to odd classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and even classes on Wednesdays and Fridays. With the four by four block, they go to all four classes, and we wanted to provide a schedule where students were able to see their teachers every day and only have four courses to focus on. And in those four courses, they do about a year's worth of content in a semester. The schedule has also allowed us to align with, at the time with the LA County Department of Health's recommendation that teachers see no more than three cohorts of students if we were return to campus. Keeping our periods at the same length as when we were in school provided time for our teachers to provide intervention to students that were struggling. Because math and design have been cohort in the past, we decided to continue that with our four by four blocks. So students will stay with the same math and design teacher all year. Um, and the teachers are infusing design into their math lessons. We've also paired uh, INS and LNL, which as you know, is our social studies and English classes because of the literacy standards that run throughout LNL and INS. I'd now like to have Ms. Winter uh, speak to you about our IB grading and implementation. Hi, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, everybody seems frozen on my screen. Um, we can hear you, Crystal. Oh, good, perfect, because everything is literally frozen. I have no picture, so hello. Good evening, sorry about that. Um, as we continue to explain our expand our implementation of the MYP by transitioning to full MYP grades. We feel that this is best for our students because we are shifting the mindset of assessment scores being the end. Uh, oh, I think we lost Crystal. Uh, we feel this is best for our students as we're shifting the emphasis from summative assessments being at the end of the learning to teacher feedback and student growth. This is a more forgiving grading system as scores are not averaged and grades reflect student growth. In addition, this transition addresses five recommendations from the 2019 IB evaluation visit. Teachers have been working collaboratively on Monday to make this transition successful. And if I do say they've been doing an amazing job with it. Uh, next slide. Through the MYP, we continue to focus on the importance of service learning and eighth grade students will continue to i'm sorry eighth grade students will complete a safe community project the implementation of the myp as a whole has benefited benefited from this shift to the altitude learning platform mr brownlin is up next to give you some more information on the altitude learning platform good evening uh, president nishimi school board members benny good to see you bud uh, in preparing for the 2020-2021 school year, we sought a solution to a need to express teachers and families for a common learning management system. At several meetings and platform showcases, we discovered that Altitude was our solution. Summer professional development was provided for teachers to introduce them to and get familiar with the platform, as well as time to build their content. Students are enjoying the platform, access their assignments, and submit their work. As one eighth grade student stated, I like how the platform is very student friendly. All the cards show up on my platform based on their due dates. Parents also have their accounts on the platform that are connected to their student accounts. Both teachers and students can stream home updates, reminders. As a staff, we have monthly PD meetings with Altitude, weekly office hours with our instructional coaches, including myself, and time to work into on the platform. We also have six teachers participating Altitude's Educator Institute, where we meet weekly over the course of five weeks to just deepen our practices in manageable, actionable ways that best serve our learners. Next slide. 
With this transition, I the need to communicate all things related to the platform and help parents throughout the onboarding process. Thus, we hosted parent nights to introduce families to the platform, ensure they were successful in signing into their parent accounts, and also hosted office hours to address questions as well as concerns. We created a two page titled How We Met and share with uh, parents and families as a means to provide information on what scoring looks like in the platform and how it aligns with our MYP achievement levels. Okay. One of the major benefits with our transition to altitude is the support we have from our teachers that utilized last year through our cohort. And folks have been supporters in the departments, sharing tips on what worked well during their experience with the platform. As a quick refresher, authentic mastery and purposeful learning with our focus on targeting instruction mastery learning incorporating flexible pacing and building student leadership, we have worked hard to create rich and authentic learning opportunities for our students and the altitude learning platform has supported us throughout this adventure to report that our amp team has expanded last year had six teachers at esms across various subject areas and grade levels as part of the team we four teachers this year, making it a total of 10 or approximately a quarter of the staff at ESMS as part of AMP. With this AMP expansion, extensive professional development, supporting student-centered instruction. This year, our primary focus is competency-based assessment strategies, which aligns well with MYP scoring and achievement levels. All in all, we look forward to continuing our collaborative work together and growing in our understanding and implementation of student-centered learning, thus making engaging for our students. And now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Alasha. Good evening. We have also been intentional about how we engage with and support our families, especially during this time of quarantine and distance learning. Our counselors have created a new space on our website with many links to resources for families. They also host a parent academy via Zoom twice a month where they address timely parent concerns such as social emotional wellness, motivation and online safety practices. Our teachers hosted over 370 parent conferences this last month, and many teachers invited all families interested in order to increase engagement and community during this time. Lastly, Mr. Wright sends out a weekly parent newsletter to share all upcoming news and events with our families. Next slide, please. We are cognizant of building community and social emotional wellness with our staff as well, especially during this time. We're increasing our understanding of equity and inclusion with a series of professional learning by local expert Farzana Nayani throughout this school year. We have a staff ruler implementation team who meet monthly to model and guide our staff in using this social emotional learning tool. And this team also begins meeting with a Yale ruler coach beginning next week. Finally, Mr. Wright and I have made special staff deliveries to encourage and thank our staff. Next slide, please. Our intentional work engaging families and staff all lead to the benefit of increased student engagement and social emotional well being. Toward this end, many of our teachers are utilizing the shortened Monday schedule to build community within their classes. Our counselors have been intentional about visiting classrooms and breakout rooms with small groups of students to help build relationships and community. And they also have been making weekly donut deliveries to students who were struggling to submit work or attend Zoom classes and have since shown improvement. In fact, this week, Mr. Wright and I will join our counselors on their donut deliveries because there are so many students to congratulate on their improvements. For Red Ribbon Week, our lead, oh, sorry, back one more. For Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week, our leadership class designed a week of spirit days, which these pictures highlight. They're continuing by planning monthly spirit days on the last Friday of every month in order to bring some student-led fun into our Bulldog community. Okay, next slide. So moving forward, uh, to mitigate learning loss, we've developed a multi-pronged plan to address any learning loss that has happened in the spring. By addressing students' social emotional health, designing a school schedule to allow students to see their teachers daily and parent engagement, 
We hope to make up ground on any learning loss that happened in, in the spring. Using small cohorts and the CASP uh, interim assessment blocks, we found that there has been less learning loss than we previously expected. Studies show that by ensuring students having have access to grade level material, we'll minimize their learning loss. And we know at Elsa Glenn Middle School, we are continuing to engage our students in a rigorous curriculum that will prepare them for their future as equals. Next slide. Today was uh, probably my, usually the, the first day of school is my second favorite day of the year, but I, I, might, I might put today as my, my first favorite day that I've had in the last nine months. Uh, today, we welcomed seven students back to campus. Uh, as you can see from the picture above, uh, with our new special ed teacher, uh, Mr. Faulkner, uh, we uh, will be welcoming a few more back tomorrow, but we welcomed back seven students today. Uh, it was great to see them on campus uh, and talking to them before they walked on. I asked them if they've ever been this excited to come to school before, and there was a resounding no. Uh, one mom even said that her son woke up before her and was dressed and ready for school before she even woke up, um, which just, it warmed my heart and, and you know, love to see them back on campus. Um, we're currently working within the LA County Department of Health guidelines for bringing students back on campus, and it's our hope to bring back additional students after the Thanksgiving break. Finally, at also going to middle school, we aim to develop students that are inquisitive, knowledgeable, and caring about our, oh, you can go to the next one again, sorry, uh, about our multicultural world. I want to thank, we want all of our students to be successful at El Segundo Middle School and beyond. Uh, thank you all very much, and uh, I'm open for any questions I think that the board has. Uh, I see. Um... Miller. Yes. Hello. Um, I just want to say as a parent of an eighth grader, he is totally engaged in what's happening. And I really appreciate all the thoughtful effort that's going into this. I mean, he even shows me stuff he's doing, which he didn't usually used to do anyway. So I mean, like, this is great. Um, so I really, I know it's weird, but I think you guys are really making it work, at least from what I can tell with him and his circle of friends who I hear them then like gaming later in the day, occasionally talking about school stuff too. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for your hard work in this, but I want to also say that I got a little teary seeing kids back in a classroom. Oh my so I'm excited and I hope that that's happening on the path that everybody wants it to and that everybody feels safe and comfortable and, and it really does warm my heart too to see that. So thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Nancy Cobb and then Paulette Codell. Mm -hmm. Nancy, you're still muted. Okay. And I thought I was ready to talk. Uh, I was really interested to hear what you were doing with assessment. And I'm really pleased that you're doing so many formative assessments because I think often that was something that we weren't focusing on enough. Um, I do have. Uh, I guess some questions and concerns going forward, though, because usually we hear a whole lot about how the students are performing compared with neighboring districts and compared with the state. And of course, we don't have the data to do that at this point, but uh, we still know that that is coming and that we're going to have to put our students back into that um, very soon. So uh, I'm kind of wondering um, if the assessments are leading some of them leading toward that kind of state assessment that we will be facing in the not too distant future. Um, and also, I'm wondering if uh, with the way that you're doing assessments and uh, a new kind of grading, essentially, if you are also um, talking with the high school, if you've had any time, because they're, they're on a much different program, let's say. Uh, and I just think that um, sometime or other, uh, I would hope that there's going to be some conversation so that uh, each uh, site understands what the other's doing so that the kids have a, an easier transition. If you, I don't know if you have anything to add to that or if you're just going to. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the way we're assessing students with the MYPs um, 
and allowing students that growth and really developing the skills on campus, right? So what we've really looked at is the skills that, that come with MIP really mirror the common core standards and what we're having students do as far as you know, reading comprehension, listening comprehension, um, analyzing texts, using um, uh, you know, multiple sources in their writing. Um, and all that, you know, through English and through uh, social studies, so INL, LNL and INS uh, really help prepare students for testing. We just did uh, some of our IABs um, to really kind of practice and see what that looks like for our students. Uh, we got a great data, not just from the results of the test, but also some of the struggles they had on their iPads at home and, and some of the technolog technological limitations that may cause for us and some stressors from students and, and parents on that. So that was some great data we got over the last two weeks just to be able to figure out how we how are we going to test if we're still on distance learning and, and what is that going to take from us. Um, another advantage we have uh, in teaming up with the high school is uh, Sarah Devlantes was here for two years and really understands that IB curriculum. And so um, being able to take that to the high school and how that translates and really working on on skills. Right. We know with a lot of the content areas in middle school, students will see that again in high school. And from a former high school person, you know, we know content is important, but really building those skills for our students um, to really, really, you know, progress forward and, and working within our, uh, our you know, district guidelines. Did I get them all? I think I got them all. <laughs> if I did, please I let me know. It. And I, I just wanted to uh, emphasize that I hope that as you plan going forward, that there's an opportunity for uh, middle school teachers to uh, have conversation with high school teachers so that uh, they also understand what, what's happening. Uh, so I'll, I'll just hold out that hope and I'll be off the boards, but I, I, I have my sources. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that that will happen. Um, I also wondered if AMPT is connected to any larger organization or if this is purely a homegrown product. Um, coming in last year and, and, and maybe uh, Sean, if you want to jump in and help on that too. Um, I know it is what we've done, but I don't know that it's connected to anything outside. Uh, Mr. Brandon, are you still on? Yeah, so uh, we we actually uh, with uh, the support and help of uh, Dr. Uh, Jack kind of branded what we were trying to do in terms of bringing personalized learning and that student centered instruction um, to um, El Segundo. So last year we had about I think it was about twelve teachers that opted in to do this extensive uh, professional development. Uh, we are uh, connecting with uh, other schools that either use the platform. Or that have focused on uh, this element of uh, personalization, uh, but I mean, hopefully, it'll continue to grow, and we'll kind of see uh, what, what else what else holds for it. Well, I did hear that you had several other districts visiting, and um, mm -hmm. I guess I was one of those visitors too. So I just wondered if the actual program had extended beyond El Segundo's uh, sites, or if it was still pretty much here. What you're doing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's more, think, go ahead. Yeah, I think when Altitude works with the school district, they specifically tailor the program for that district in aligned with that district's vision. So they were well aware and before they even came here, wanted to see our work through on the graduate profile so that the teachers would know what were the competencies the board had adopted. And so really it was from there that the teachers did the deep dive and identified the priority specific to middle school. So uh, one of um, another district working with Altitude in Menlo Park, their profile looks a little bit different based on the community they serve. Um, and I know we had visitors from Inglewood uh, who mm -hmm. came, I don't know if they ended up going with uh, Altitude, but uh, that is what they are known for. They are not a program that imposes their objectives, but they work with the teachers and honor the educators and empower the team to tailor that to the district's vision and goals. Okay, so I have uh, one compliment I wanted to make sure that I make, and that's that I'm very impressed that your attendance rates and uh, engagement are are doing so well. That, that's very impressive, particularly because this is such a very different model. And then I have one last question. And that is, um, do you have any updates on how the uh, Arizona 
distance learning program is going as far as it affects middle schoolers. And that's yeah, it. Absolutely. Uh, with the ASU, um, it is definitely, it started out a little slow, but I think as students got into the program, we kind of worked out, you know, being a new program, uh, it's definitely hit its stride in the last uh, two months. And so we've definitely seen a lot of progress for our students. Um, they're following a similar, many of them are still following the similar four by four schedule where they only have four classes. Um, but in the last update I got from teachers, about 80% of our kids were on pace to, to finish. And we have a, a couple of kids that are kind of straggling, but they're working to catch up, which is the nice thing about the program is, it, you know, it can be very self-paced. So they're, they're able to get through all the content uh, before the end of the semester. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paulette? My turn? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I want to congratulate you on your first presentation. Thank good you. Good job. Yes. <laughs> Listen, very good. And um, I, I really appreciate that you addressed the learning loss. I'm reading a lot about that now in the days about how that's critical. And so that was, I was happy to see that. And I'm also happy to see that you are addressing the social emotional component and including ruler. That is also, I think, extremely important. So good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, any other comments? Well, thank, thank you. Um, I, I did have one question. How, how are you assessing that learning loss and what are you doing to mitigate it? So a couple of things we've done, we've done, we've used our IABs um, to kind of compare last year to this year and students and, and their skill levels, um, but also using uh, data from our uh, summative assessments to track where students are and where they're going and, and kind of the expectations uh, for where they should be at this time. So even though we've, you know, we've gone to a different final grading, you know, method, we've been giving summatives for the last uh, five, five years. Um, so we've got a lot of data on the progress students should be making. So, you know, as far as our, our final grading is different, but what we do during the year is exactly the same. You know, we were, we were grading on an MYP scale and then just converting it to a letter grade before. Now we're just not converting to that letter grade. So teachers are, are able to track and see where student performance is and whether it is, um, how relative it is to years previous and their successes. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Moore. I just want to uh, congratulate the team. This is kind of a new team where we have obviously Mr. Wright, who, you know, is is close to, are you close to a year of service now? Uh, 11 months, just well, out of 11 months. months. Okay, 11 <laughs> months, counting. and I think only like two or three of the months were in person, or? Uh, ten, 10 weeks, 10 weeks in ten, person. 10 but, weeks in person, I mean, that's a real challenge. So <laughs> he has come on and just really embraced the fact that, um, uh, you have to be flexible, you have to be about kids, and um, you've got to, you know, be nimble and adjust. And uh, he embraced his new team member in Ms. Olashian. And then, of course, we have um, our uh, tremendous teaching uh, uh, teachers over at um, El Segundo Middle School and our IB coordinator and Crystal and our coach and Sean. And so, uh, they've all really stepped up to all be leaders in their own realm. And so I really see um, El Segundo Middle School as uh, lead learners and kind of using that Michael um, Bullen's uh, notion of everybody being a lead learner in their field. And so they really embraced the challenges. They stepped up. And I think the report you uh, presented tonight, it was very fair and balanced. And I congratulate you for providing us a genuine report that reflects the good things that are going on there. And you have many fans and uh, several parents who attended this evening <laughs> as well. So that's nice. I always love to see the tremendous middle school support from parents. It's great to see. Yeah, big thank you to all of our parents. Thank They've you. been so supportive this year. So I really appreciate all their support and, and all of your support uh, over the last 11 months. It's it's uh, been an interesting start to a first year, and thank you all for, for all that. We're glad you're still here and you didn't uh, go <laughs> screaming off somewhere, but thanks for rising to the challenge. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, we're going to move on to our consent agenda. And uh, Member Cobb has requested that we pull item F, and Member Caudill has requested that we pull item L. So our consent agenda, uh, we I will need a motion to approve items A through N with the exclusion of F and L. I'll move approval. Okay, moved by Tracy Miller Zarnke and uh, second, seconded by Emily Lane. Right, any discussion on the consent agenda items that are uh, up for approval at this time? Right, then uh, I'll let, oh, excuse me, your advisory vote, Benny? Aye. Aye. Okay. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. I don't know if that came through. Aye. Yeah. Uh, Tracy? Aye. And I from me. So 5 uh, 0 for the consent agenda items um, that for which we had the motion. Uh, next, we will uh, deal with item. F and uh, I'll entertain a motion in the second, then we can have discussion on that. So, a motion to approve item F by Nancy Cobb, seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. And uh, Nancy, did you have some questions or you wanted some uh, further discussion on item F? I actually, I was hoping that Dr. Moore could um, comment on this too, because it's not often that we see. Uh, this large of an expenditure that we haven't seen previously, but this is for um, specifically Goff's safety partitions, and uh, we have one in um, in, a, in the amount of sixty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy something, and the other one uh, in excess of twenty-seven thousand. So, I just uh, was hoping that she would speak to it uh, to let us know. What's happening and what to expect going forward as far as safety partitions are concerned. Thank you, Member Cobb. Um, uh, as part of personal protective equipment, plexiglass dividers, or sometimes referred to as sneeze guards, uh, are a very important part um, that can uh, serve as a surface to separate um, that student uh, from an adult or that adult from another adult who's in an office. So. We have been very vigilant in getting partitions out to people. Um, in addition, we continue to reevaluate as new products come forward. So um, this was actually to include purchase of um, individual plexiglass uh, type stations for each uh, student desk as well. Um, so those are uh, on order and will be arriving. So as we look to bring students back in um, TK through second, we made sure that they're gonna fit on any size desk. Uh, and so they will be on every student's desk as well as the teacher will have their own partition. Uh, it's a very important part of the safety protocols. Nancy, you need to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Uh, is there an expectation that we'll have to continue purchasing these as students return to school so that each one has one on their desk? Uh, yes, uh, we continue to reevaluate. For example, uh, in the area of tents, we made an initial assessment on how many tents we were going to need. We placed an order. And then as we hear from um, uh, those that are gonna be the users of these things, such as our teachers, uh, we realize, well, maybe we'll need more tents. And so we continue to reevaluate, evaluate, assess, and then order accordingly. Um, uh, this is the safety and well being of our students and staff. And uh, we look to uh, obviously buy an appropriate product for those purposes. Thank you. All right. Then, um, Benny, I'll ask for your advisory vote. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye from me. So 5 0 to pass item F. Next, we have item L. So uh, we can have a motion in a second for item L. So moved. 
uh, moved by Paulette Caudell, seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. And um, Paulette, did you want to comment or ask Dr. Moore for? I need to ask Dr. Moore uh, for clarification. We are voting to approve a traffic study at Center Street School. Um, and I'm wondering how they're going to do that with no traffic. Thank you, Member Caudell. That's an excellent question. And um, uh, working with uh, Preeti D'Souza, our uh, bond program manager, uh, she reached out to the city uh, of uh, El Segundo Public Works Department and under uh, previous Public Works Director Ken Berkman, the city had been participating in a traffic study. So they took a look at the turning movement counts and average daily traffic when uh, prior uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, and so we have uh, been able to get a draft of that study. Uh, they did not com consider this study to be final as it has not had full analysis or acceptance of the council. Uh, however, the data is good. And so this information will be shared with our consultant. Uh, the city did indicate that um, this uh, would have to be analyzed by our own consultant and not something that could just be shared outright. Um, so this will be the data that we will be using in these extraordinary circumstances. Great question. I appreciate you bringing that forward. Thank you very much. I appreciate the answer. All right. Then, um, Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. You know, I think it's also important to note that, you know, this is this item and the change of that is coming quickly. And and why we are taking uh, steps now. Mm -hmm. Tracy, aye, aye from me. So uh, item L passes five zero. Moving on to action items, item A acceptance of gifts. Emily, if you'll read our gifts. Yep, and quite some big ones uh, today. Um, from Kroger, we have $962.86 to El Segundo Middle School. Uh, El Segundo Middle School PTSA, $10,000 to the middle school. And then again, the middle school PTSA, $1,625.96 to the middle school. And Chevron uh, Products Company, $175,000 uh, district ride for Chromebooks. Um, seeing no conflict uh, with our education code, I move approval of um, these wonderful gifts. Seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. Any discussion? Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Aye. Nancy? Aye. Aye. Emily? Aye. And Tracy? Aye. Aye for me, 5-0. And we do thank our very generous donors for these gifts, especially those Chromebooks. What a gift to the district. All right, we're moving on to a public hearing on the statutory school fees and mitigation payments. Dr. Moore. Uh, yes, there have been no public comments that have been sub submitted regarding um, the study that was conducted and available for the public to view. All right, then I will open the public hearing in case there are any who wish to make uh, comments at this time. But as Dr. Moore indicated, there were none submitted. So the, the hearing was opened at 5.46 p.m. And I'm not going to wait till the uh, little hand moves. We'll say 547, we closed. And um, we will move ahead. I uh, There's no further action on that one, correct, Dr. Moore? Just the opening of the hearing and closing. Correct. OK. Then we will move on to the um, 
Item D, which is the approval of amended TLC and Eaglet care fee schedule effective December 1, 2020. Dr. Moore. Yes, item D uh, specifically is um, to re uh, align the TLC and Eaglet care uh, programming and fees with the uh, hybrid program that we're proposing for bringing students back for reopening. So this is an, an example of why we don't get the waiver approved on Thursday and we open school on, on Monday because there are a lot of um, uh, things that we need to prepare, like bring our uh, meet with our teachers and then certainly have a town hall for our parents. So we're very pleased that we'll be able to offer either before or after school care for our students who participate in the AM PM model uh, if their parents so choose. We will also continue to offer the full day program for our three and four year olds or for students in grades three through five who um, are not uh, participating uh, yet in the waiver program because it's not allowed through Department of Public Health. So we've made some adjustments, we've tightened our belts and there are some savings here for our families. And so um, I appreciate the work of Kim Linz in the business department and Guadalupe Grijalva for bringing this forward along with Denise Escuna. So I think we have, uh, we had some one-time expenses for the various PPEs and uh, we've been able to uh, use some uh, COVID monies for that. Um, and that's been able to bring down the fee schedule. Right, not often that fees come down. So we're happy to present this new fee schedule. So I'll need a motion to approve. Okay, approved by Paulette Caudel and seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion? Nancy? Uh, you need to ask. Yeah. I just want to say I'm very pleased that this is happening. And I'm wondering if there's any, uh, if, if you anticipate that there'll be any necessity to seek additional facilities for this to take place. Um, once the board approves uh, this item this evening, we'll be surveying parents to see what the interest is um, for the program. And then we'll identify if additional space is needed. We did identify um, spaces on each campus that will be available for use. Uh, because many of our distance learning teachers are not occupying their classroom uh, or perhaps a special teacher uh, is not using their classroom. So we do have some spaces that we've identified um, before we have to go off campus. I also want to um, compliment you for having a more flexible program so that if parents just need it before school or after school, that uh, it, it will accommodate them. So. Thanks to the staff, we figured that out. <laughs> Thank you. It was um, the health order made it very hard when you have to cohort uh, students uh, and keep those stable um, to do that. But uh, we do think we're going to have more interest and be able to establish those to the best of our ability. Thank you. Right. Right. Uh, advisory vote, Benny? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye from me, 5 for item D. Next. Excuse me, President Nishimi. Yes. We skipped item C. We mm -hmm. did the public hearing for a oh, oh. school fees, but we skipped C. Oh, you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll go back to item C. Um, yeah, I guess they looked alike, but I forgot one is public hearing, then we have to take action. So we'll now have to take action on the um, ESUSD statutory school fees and mitigation payments for 2019 20. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion to approve item C. Moved by Nancy Cobb, seconded by Emily Lane. Any further discussion? Oh, Dr. Nishimi, I just want to point out that this is only acceptance of the fee study. 
This is not the board acting on increasing any fees. That was at a, a, a separate meeting earlier this year. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So, all right. Any discussion on this item? All right. So we will study these fees uh, based on your vote. <laughs> Betty, advisory vote. Aye. Okay. Paulette. Aye. Nancy. Aye. And Emily. Aye. Tracy. Aye. And I for me. So item C is passed 5 0. All right, moving on uh, to item E, which is the board policy and administrative regulation 5131.2. Dr. Moore. Yes, both item E and F, once again, are changes that were uh, regulatory in nature. The US Department of Education enacted new rules that affected Title IX, um, and it was extending protections regarding sexual harassment and addressing the rights of all students, including the right to due process. So both of these items are our final revisions uh, that were necessary to bring our policies uh, in line with the um, statutory requirements. Thank you. So uh, motion to approve item E. A move by Paulette Caudell, seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion? Great. Uh, Nancy? Is this the, does this all have to do with Title IX that I'm reading may be changed again in the future, uh, Dr. Moore? Uh, well, as um, administrations change at a federal level, so does the policymakers in the Department of Education. So we will wait and see, but we are in line with what's current. <laughs> and you may have, yeah, okay. All right. Um, advisory vote, Benny? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye. For me, so item E is passed 5 0. And then similarly, we are, our next item is approval of board policy 5145.9. Motion to approve by Nancy Cobb. Seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. Any discussion on this one? All right. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. I for me, so uh, F is approved, 5 -0. And then item G is approval of a master contract with Star of California LALC for psychological, a psychological corporation to provide behavioral services and assessments. Dr. Moore. Uh, yes, these uh, services are specific to six students that are identified. Um, it will likely be that um, based on whatever that individual student circumstances are, whether they remain on distance learning or they return to school for a portion of the day or um, four days a week, um, this would be revised to reflect whatever those needs would be in a virtual setting or hybrid in person. Um, so uh, I recommend approval. Okay. Um, motion to approve by Paulette Cardell, seconded by Tracy miller Zarnick. Any discussion on item G? Uh, Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye from me, so item G is passed, 5-0. Moving on to uh, item H, which is a ratification approval of license agreement with Kaiser Brothers. Dr. Moore. Yes, the school district owns a property at 210 Penn that back in the day used to be, I guess, uh, where the bus went. Um, uh, so it's quite old, uh, but there are currently two um, in, uh, 
the district has two individuals who lease uh, that space. Uh, it's divided into two spaces. And uh, at this time, we'd like to renew our lease with Kaiser Brothers, who has been a responsible and excellent tenant uh, in that space. So, um, and uh, it would continue uh, through uh, 2022. Motion to approve by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. Seconded by Paulette Caudel. Any discussion? Okay, we're just happy to be have tenants on our rental property. Um, Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye for me. 5 0. Uh, to pass item H. Next, we have item I, which is approval of addendum 06 to the master agreement with PBK Architects for the two story six classroom building at Richmond Street School. And I see we have three um, addendums with P PBK. So, Dr. Press, you can address all of those. Yes, it's always exciting when we get to start moving forward with phase two. So as the board is aware, um, earlier um, this fall, we had our bond sale for Series B bonds. And with that money, we can move forward with our phase two projects and uh, at an expedited uh, timeline that the board established. So both I, J, and K are for phase two projects. Item I is for the classroom building at Richmond Street School, and that is specifically to um, then stabilize the enrollment for both schools where they would be similar in size. Uh, and then item J is for uh, science uh, classroom modernization, and item K is for uh, music band room modernization. So these would be in the uh, planning stages. Wonderful. So um, we'll start with item I. If we can have a motion to approve item I. Moved by Paulette Cardell, seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion on I? All right, then uh, advisory vote, Benny? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Aye. Nancy? Aye. Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. And I from me, so item I is approved, 5-0. Next, we'll move into um, addendum 04 to, for the master agreement uh, for El Segundo Middle School Science Classroom Modernization Project. And if somebody would move to approve. Moved by Emily Lane, seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion on this particular project? I just wanted to know that um, it's important that uh, with our bond pro program manager, I really appreciate that we want to try and keep these programs in budget. So uh, although we might go out and ask for input from staff or whatnot, at times it's important to note that sometimes ideas that someone has are too costly. And so we do need to keep these program uh, projects in budget because it affects the overall bond program. Well, and, and with that, I think it's important that this is the result of a good year and a half, at least, of, of meeting with the community and faculty before we got um, to the actual bond uh, master plan. So I, I think uh, it is prudent. And as we are doing projects and, and seeing different changes and costs, and um, we really have to be careful. Okay. Then, Benny, your advisory vote, please. Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. And Tracy? Aye. Aye for me. Item K is approved. Five, oh, sorry, that's item um, J. I crossed it out and couldn't read it. Item J is passed. Five vote. Moving on to item K. I could have a motion to approve item K, which is for the music band room modernization projects. Moved by Tracy Miller-Zarnicki, seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion on this one? 
Yes, Tracy. Just want to point out this includes music instrument storage for any middle school parents who have been concerned about that for years. This is where your big instruments will go. So you don't have to worry about them all day long. That's part of it. That's not the whole thing, but just want to make sure they saw that that was in there. All right. Okay, uh, Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Okay, Paulette. Aye. Nancy. Aye. Emily. Aye. Trace. Aye. Aye for me. So item K is approved. Five vote. Moving on to item L, which is an approval to enter into affiliation agreement with Western Governors University. Dr. Moore. Yes, this agreement would allow for um, uh, uh, candidates who are completing uh, their program with Western Governors University to participate in student teaching and practicum in our school district under the supervision of our teachers. Thank you. And I believe we have one employee who's involved in the program. Yes, we Very do. Good. All right. Uh, motion to approve by Paulette. Cadell, seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion on this? Yes, Nancy. So since I hadn't heard of them and I knew that we were always very careful about who we made um, arrangements with, I just wanted to report that I did read an article in Forbes that gave them a very excellent online review. Um, I, I'm sorry, they, they it was in the printed magazine too, but uh, this is an online program, but it's probably the highest rated one uh, in the United States. So, uh, whereas I started out being a little skeptical because I hadn't heard of it, I found out that many people have heard of it and it does have an excellent reputation. So I'm much more comfortable now. All right, thank you. All right, Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Uh, Tracy indicated I. <laughs> and I for me. So item L is passed, 5 0. Next, we have item N, which is an approval to enter into an agreement with Amtec Elevator to repair and modernize the elevator at El Segundo High School. Dr. Moore? Yes, we've had several attempts to do this at a lower level, and unfortunately, the elevator is reached its uh, lifespan, so it requires uh, quite an overhaul. Uh, I know this is costly, but we will be using our deferred maintenance funding for this. Okay. All right, uh, motion to approve item M. Moved by Nancy Cobb, seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. Any discussion? Got to have working elevators, so we have no choice. Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Aye for me, so item M is passed, 5-0. Moving on to reports. Um, Dr. Moore, informational calendar. Yes, informational calendar for next week. We have quite a few things uh, as far as evening events go. We have our PTA Council meeting on Monday, and that's virtual. We have our town hall for our parents uh, that will be going over uh, TK through second grade reopening, uh, and that's at 5 p.m. And I know Tracy Miller Zarnicki has agreed to join us, and I'm hoping that. Uh, uh, future Vice President Emily Lane perhaps could join us for that as well. Um, and then it will be myself, Marisa Janicek, Dylan Ferris, uh, hopefully Ali Rabihi, and we'll have Jack Plotkin as our moderator again. Um, in addition, we have uh, Dr. Plotkin hosting a special ed parent forum, forum on return services. And it is heartwarming to see that our special ed students who have the greatest needs returning to school. Um, was very, very exciting uh, that today we had uh, Department of Public Health come out and act actually see the kids in the classrooms and see that the protocols and all the various signage and uh, uh, health order pro um, uh, equipment and things are all there for our students. 
And then lastly, of course, uh, Frank Glenn reminded all of us to get your tickets for the Ed Foundation Ladies Night Out on the 19th. Uh, the week of the 23rd will be our um, Thanksgiving recess, and we hope our parents have heard from teachers. The week of the 16th of November is also our parent conference week at the elementary level. All right. Um, we have the high school ASB financial statements for your review, should you wish to look at that. And we'll move on now to board member reports and discussion. And we'll start with uh, member Paulette Caudill. Um, I attended a road meeting on Thursday, October 29th. And um, I was really excited. We, we are able to get a proclamation approved by the city council to honor Red Ribbon Week. And that was a big deal. That's the first time we've done that. And um, I also went to a town hall put on by students from Palos Verdes High School. Uh, their, their group is called Kigash, and um, they're a, a smoking sensation club. And I was really, really, really impressed with the Zoom meeting that they put on um, about vaping. And it's scary, very scary during these times to hear about how much damage vaping does to the lungs and particularly kids, and especially in this time of COVID. So this is not a good activity to engage in at all. And it was really impressive seeing the kids and I think had more impact. Uh, I also am, am really pleased we have two students on the road committee from ASB. Um, uh, <laughs> Nick, oh, I think I mentioned that last time, Nick and um, Sophie. And we're, I just, we're really ha excited to have them. So I'm gonna mention it again. Um, also, Oh, yeah, okay, and I attended a, a Richmond Street School PTA meeting last night, and I'm really impressed with how smoothly those, those PTA Zoom meetings are working and, and they move right along. I just really, I wouldn't have thought it would have been so nice. Everybody does so much good work, and they can get their business done, and it's really amazing. Amazing, amazing. All right. That's good. I'm over and out. <laughs> Thank you, Paulette. All right, uh, moving on to Nancy Cobb. Thank you. Uh, I'd first like to just thank all of the candidates who ran for our board. Uh, we all know that sometimes running for office is a lot more difficult than actually performing uh, in the position. So I want to thank all of you for that effort. And I also want to give congratulations to the two winners that will be joining us. Uh, well, actually not us, Jeannie. Uh, <laughs> Jeannie and I will be retiring and uh, the new board members will be joining the rest of you on the board. So I want to thank all of you. I also want to report that I will be attending yet another budget study for SoCal Rock this Thursday, and then uh, the next week, uh, another meeting. Um, and we continue to look for options, and uh, we did send the board the latest updates so that you know that we are still talking to El Camino, but uh, it would probably not uh, mean at this point in time any kind of a merger, but rather working more closely with them so that we can work out some pathways that could end up with El Camino, you know, going into the classes at El Camino, the possibility of dual credit there as well. Uh, also, El Camino wants to talk to us about leasing some of our property at SoCal Rock. Uh, there's a lot of property there, and I encourage you, if you have not visited, to take a look at it. Uh, we're currently leasing some of it to a private school, and then this would be if it, if it pans out, it would be yet another uh, arrangement, which would also increase the financial viability a little bit longer if this goes through. So we continue to work on it. I welcome any input from anybody who has more ideas for us. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Emily Lane, we'll hear from you next. Yeah, it's been um, very interesting as we start the the waiver process i you know i again congratulate uh, esusd um, for uh, 
having the right um, protocols and, and measures in place to be able to to um, successfully get our waiver approved. Um, I I am hearing from the community on. So what does that mean next? When are we opening? What's going on? And as as Dr. Moore talked to, you know, a little earlier, um, you know, just since we got the waiver, doesn't mean we can open the next day. There are um, some things that we we need to get straightened out so that we are completely ready for students. Um, but I know we're going to get there, and, and we are doing everything we can to to get that done quickly. Um, and um, I, I think our teachers, it's 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 a hard time, you know. This year has been summer. We were preparing to do what we're kind of talking about, you know, now, and then that got pulled back and full virtual, and and now mid couple months in, we're going back to what we started talking about in summer. Um, it's hard, but I think um, the one thing we have to keep in mind is what's best for all of our students. And um, while we are doing the best and, and I think El Escendo is excelling at this virtual, it's not the same as, as having students in the classroom. So I, I thank everyone and, and I know it's going to be challenging, but I just remind everyone that, um, you know, being back at the class, however that looks, is, is a good step forward and, and something our kids need. So, um, and, you know, even just our janitorial staff or everybody that's making this happen. I, I thank everyone. Um, I would thank the community, you know, hearing uh, Frank Glenn say that El Segundo, uh, you know, during for the Skechers walk increased during these hard times. I, I think that is a, another testament to, to this community. And um, as Nancy brought up in our expenditures, you know, things, it's not easy right now. There's a lot of extra things to, to educate right now. So um, thank you to the community. Um, I look forward to the ladies night out. Uh, it's, you know, I've we've been going for years and years, and um, very curious to see how this goes. But you know, um, I I really look forward to another year. And again, congratulations to Daima and Mike. Um, get ready. It's <laughs> you know, uh, Nancy said sometimes the running's harder. I I think in this year I would challenge that. <laughs> um, this is a very interesting year to be on the board with just many different facets, but it's it's very informative and um, I welcome um, some new eyes and ears on, on topics. And I know we'll do more next, but I, it's been a pleasure serving with Nancy and, and, and Jeannie, and I know we'll have a little hurrah next meeting as they leave us. But, and I wanted to thank Amy for putting her hat in again. It is not an easy feat to, to do that again, but I thank her and, um, you know, it's a, to be um, quite the next couple little bit as we bring students back and, and as we do different things and, and still deal with global COVID. You know, it's it's real and but I think we're we're headed in the right direction. Thanks. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Tracy, your report. Yes. Um, let's see. I have recently attended the high school PTA meeting, which again was well attended and run very nicely by their president, Jacqueline Guy. So I appreciate uh, the effort there at the high school level to keep things moving forward. Um, I am excited to be virtually attending Ladies Night Out. And I have to say, it's actually kind of nice to not have to worry about doing makeup and hair and all that. Just sitting there in my pajamas watching it if I want to. Um, and I don't even know what's in fashion right now because I live in you know yoga pants and whatever. So I'll be excited to see what our models are modeling that are actually in fashion. Um, and thank you to the Ed Foundation team for pivoting to make that happen for us in the digital world. Um, last but not least, I think I want to say thank you to all three candidates who ran for school board. Uh, you are brave souls and I welcome your, your participation here, the two that won. Congratulations. We'll see you here soon. And to Amy, again, uh, you ran a beautiful race and your commitment to this town, this community still stands strong, even if you don't have to be in these meetings. So thank you for that. And uh, I think that is all I'll say. Um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a safe but wonderful Thanksgiving, everyone. And I look forward to what's next. Thank you. Um, as Nancy indicated, this is uh, 
kind of our final regular meeting. Nancy and I are retiring after um, this meeting. We'll have a sh brief role in the last meeting in, in December, but essentially this is my final board report. So I, I did write some comments. I didn't want to forget, um, but I, I, there were some things I wanted to say. So I, I've written my final comments. As I look back on the nine years I've spent as a member of the ESUSD Board of Education, I'm grateful to have been part of a school district that prioritizes children first, for parents who care about their children's education and ceaselessly volunteer their time to the PTA, and for a community whose generosity allows us to offer exceptional programs. That community generosity also resulted in the passage of Measure ES, which has resulted in many improvements at the school site for safety and the creation of new spaces for learning. I'm equally grateful to a board which has prudently handled district finances and the sale of the Imperial School site with an eye towards future needs and financial uncertainties. I'd like to congratulate Dr. Moore and her administrative team, faculty and staff for opening the schools for in-person services to special needs students and for TK to second grade students in the near future. I know that this has been an exceedingly challenging year for everyone. 2020 will definitely go down in the history books. Despite these challenges, I'm confident that ESUSD will continue to prioritize children first and to provide the support necessary to ensure that every student has the opportunity to succeed. Thank you, Dr. Moore and fellow board members for the privilege I've had to work with you towards our common mission of ensuring a learning environment that produces educated, productive, and compassionate citizens to meet the challenges of a global society in the 21st century. I will truly miss all of you at our regular board meetings, believe it or not, I will miss this time. Hopefully we can see each other face-to-face -face in 2021 at community events and around town. I wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving and good health through the pandemic. Thank you. Dr. Moore. Thank you for your lovely words, Jeannie. Um, it, it is bittersweet to have both you and Nancy transitioning uh, to retirement, and we do look forward to welcoming uh, Daima and Mike at our next meeting. So we will definitely uh, send you off with some remarks at that meeting, um, and then we look forward to swearing in our two new board members on December 10th. Um, I did want to mention and definitely acknowledge our wonderful business partner in Chevron. Um, you know, at this time when uh, there's so much uncertainty to be able to have a business that continues to be extraordinarily generous um, and really provide us a purposeful tool with the Chromebooks for our um, youngest students that has been um, truly, truly remarkable. So thank you, Chevron. In addition, I really want to talk just a little bit more about our preparations as it relates to reopening um, our TK through second grade waiver. First off, um, I know we are all hearing uh, through the media, the national surge in cases, the Los Angeles County surge in cases, and um, we do need to consider and continue to look at what is the epidemic uh, the data about COVID, <laughs> uh, I've got to phonetically write it out, um, as it relates to El Segundo. So um, El Segundo's data, uh, in comparison to other school districts, we are out of, out of close to 80 school districts, we are in the uh, five with the very lowest cases of COVID in the entire county. So I think that's important. I realize it's very um, frightening when you hear how this is um, uh, spreading and how cases are surging, but we also have to make decisions that are best for our community. And I am thankful to this board for approving, um, moving forward with this waiver. I am thankful for the many community organizations who provided us recommended letters, and we are thankful to our parent uh, PTAs at both of our school sites and our labor partners for 
providing us the required letters of support. It's important to note that every application gets a thorough vetting from the Los Angeles County Department of Health. So the first hoop is to have them look at our protocols and make sure that we are doing everything that is required here in Los Angeles County, which is more stringent than any other um, county practically in the state. Um, in addition, the county went as far as sending it to the state, to the California Department of Public Health to also approve what is the safety protocols and health order that is being followed. And they too approve this. So I do want to reassure our community that uh, two agencies have weighed in on our plan and said it was indeed following what is necessary to bring students and return them to school. In addition, our principals have been participating in Los Angeles County office um, uh, best practice sessions with principals who have reopened schools. So uh, both Dr. Gooden and Mr. Wright listened in on uh, a secondary principal reopening uh, webinar that took place and our elementary principals uh, and assistant principals have listened in on elementary principals that have reopened schools in other counties. Granted, the protocols are not as stringent that they have to follow, and we will have to be even more vigilant in following the health order, but it does provide an opportunity to learn what is working and what would they do differently. And so I appreciate our principals, uh, Dr. Alice Lee, Dr. Martha Monahan, Mr. Luke Oleshik, who are really digging in to make sure that they are putting students and the staff safety first as we move forward. In addition, I am putting together frequently asked questions um, that will be provided to our parents this week. And then we will be inviting questions from our community and parents uh, for the town hall that we will be fielding next week. So you'll be getting kind of almost a double dose. So you can look at what are the frequently asked questions and then you know, that spurred a question that I need a little bit more information about, and then you can submit a question to my assistant, Tracy Adams. Um, and so we'll be sending out information about um, uh, that town hall and where to submit those questions later in the week. Um, and so the town hall, just as a reminder, to save the date on your calendar is Tuesday, November 17th from at five o'clock, it'll be from five to 6.30. Uh, and it will also be uh, recorded. And so if you're unable to attend, you will also be able to tune in a day or two later and we'll have it posted on our website. So uh, we look forward to meeting with our teachers this week um, to answer their questions and providing them a basic overview as well. And we're gonna continue to stay the course uh, to move forward with providing opportunities for our students. I had an opportunity this morning to uh, be on a Zoom call with uh, Dr. Alice Lee. And she said, wait a minute, I need to stop because she wanted to go out and greet the special education students who were returning to school today. Students were hopping up and down in excitement to be back at school and they ran with a big hug because they couldn't contain their joy. So we're doing the right thing. Thank you for your support. No, we all get teary eyed when we think about students coming back to school. I just can't, can't wait. That's exciting. Well, thank you everybody. Uh, there are no closing remarks from anybody in the audience. And so uh, we will adjourn our meeting at 625. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody. It's, it's hard to believe that's just around the corner. All right. Bye-bye.